Okay, so we're just going to open up a new project. I'm going to leave my frame rate at 60 frames per second, but I recommend you just set that to whatever your project uh, in Final Cut Pro is going to be. From there, we're going to come down to duration and set that to whatever the length of your song is. My song is about 16 seconds or so, so we'll just stick with that. And we'll just do a regular motion project. Go ahead and open. So to get things started, we're going to want to import our song. So what we'll do is come up here to File, Import, or Command I, and you can just go through your files and find wherever your music source is. So I've selected my audio visualizer music and we'll just go ahead and import that and you'll notice this green line that shows up in the project file down here. You can also go over to the audio tab here. You can enable and disable, raise the volume and uh, do whatever you need to do with it there. So from there, we're just gonna get started on creating a line. So we'll, we'll click down here on this rectangle and go down to line. Now we're just gonna click and drag and push shift to straighten out the line. We'll make that, you know, pretty long. We'll come over here to the inspector, go to geometry, and to get started, we'll just set this at a zero point. That'll be our, our beginning point where the music is gonna burst up from. And let's go ahead and set our Y to something like 800. Now I'm going to click over here and push shift Z to zoom out and see the whole window, or you can do command minus or come up here and click on this percent sign and um, set it to whatever you like. From there, we're gonna come over to properties and go to our position. And we're gonna reset that so that it's perfectly in the center. Reset parameter. Now we're gonna select our line and we're gonna push L and that is going to create a replicator. From there, we'll come over to shape and go to line. That way it's working along just a singular line here rather than a whole rectangle. At that point, we can set however many points we want. Now for this particular tutorial, we're gonna keep it pretty simple and stick to just the five. We will then come down to origin and set that to center. We're gonna come down to our scale properties and we will open all of these because we're gonna need access to all of them. And we just wanna affect the Y value. So come over here to the side and this down arrow, we're gonna click that. We're gonna do add parameter behavior and go over to audio. Now you'll see this drop well thing here and we'll do two and we'll just select our music that we imported into the project. It'll take a moment to analyze it and then it will give us kind of a little bit of what's happening in the song. So you can watch there. And you can see that our lines are growing way too large for the frame. So we'll go back to our replicator and we're gonna drag our Y value all the way down to zero. Then on our scale randomness, we're gonna set that at something like five and we will click on the down arrow, add parameter behavior, and we're gonna set that to randomize. And that's just gonna make it so that the lines look a little bit different from each other. Um, and hopefully it'll, it'll make a little more sense down the road. So we are just gonna drag up our amount a bit, maybe change our noise and frequency. And from there, we can just see what that is doing. It's already doing a great job. Now, unfortunately, if we were to replicate this, um, let's say we give it like, 20 points and we drag this out. It's not gonna quite work like an audio visualizer and I'll show you why. You'll notice that the entire line is growing all at the same time. There's no variation in the frequencies. So we're gonna have to actually replicate the replicator and um, assign different values to each of the audio elements. So I'm going to just reset that parameter and we'll set this back to, I believe it was, was it negative 100? There we go. So we'll get that all reset. And what we will do is come to our audio panel here and we will set our high frequency down to 20 Hertz. And that's just gonna select this portion here. 
So now this is only going to grow on the larger base moments. From here, we're gonna to go to the replicator. We are going to push Command D and that will duplicate it. And we are going to duplicate this probably around 12 times. So we got two, three, four. Okay, so we have 12 replicated. Now, rather than going through to our properties value and setting each one accordingly, which can work if you want it to, but um, rather than taking up all of that time, we're gonna do something that's a little bit faster. So let's select our very top clip and we will set the position to be uh, 1,280 pixels and that'll plop it over there. Then come to our very bottom replicator and do minus 1,280 pixels. And that'll space it out very nicely. From there, we'll select our bottom replicator and select the top replicator with shift and that will select all the replicators in the middle. We'll come up to the top, go to object, alignment, distribute horizontal centers. And what that will do is evenly place all of our replicators on a line and it just saves us a lot of uh, the hard work. Okay, so here comes the tedious part. We are going to go through, select the audio of all 12 of these elements and we are gonna change the frequency. Okay, so what we're gonna do is come up here to audio at the top. And you'll notice our low frequency is 11 hertz, our high frequency is 20. We will then go to the next replicator in the audio element here, change our low frequency to 20 and our high frequency to 40. We will then go to the next element and we'll, we'll set this to 40 and this to 80. And we will just continue to double the frequency range up the line. So, um, I will just go ahead and quickly do that. Just continue to double this. You might need a calculator if you're me and you're terrible with math. Um, so this would be 160, 240. Okay, so I have set the last of the audio here, and if we play through, you'll notice our visualizer is starting to do some stuff. Now, there's a few things I wanna do to um, add a little bit of variation and make it look a little bit smoother. We are going to actually drag out a few of these to be just a bit longer, or a bit wider, I suppose so that they're bringing in a few more frequencies. And we are going to click through, and just to make this a little easier, we can come to the search here and type in random, and that'll just show up all the randomized filters here, or behaviors, excuse me. So we're gonna click each randomize, come up to the random seed and click the generate button. So we'll just go through and do that for each and every one, which is a little bit tedious, but not too bad. Okay, let's see how this is looking. Not too bad. Now there's a few things we can do to make this look just a little bit better. So if we clear the search here, come down to line, um, there's a few things we can change here. So if we want all of these to actually grow even larger, we could change our point here in the geometry panel. So we could change that to something like, let's try a thousand. And these will actually grow even higher, uh, maybe adding a little energy. Also, if you wanted these lines to produce down on the bottom, you could come down to the, the second point and do something like negative, um, negative a thousand. And that will just replicate it perfectly. So now we can add uh, some color to this whole thing. So let's go ahead and we'll be in our main group. We are going to add a rectangle and we're just gonna click and drag over the whole area of wherever our audio visualizer will be. From there, we'll come over to the filter, go to gradient 
and we can set this to whatever colors we so desire. I'm going to set the type to radial and I will set one color. Let's just do something kind of over the top just for demonstration's sake. So we'll set this to red and cyan there. And uh, we can actually grow the start and end points here a bit and maybe have that feather off a little bit more. From there, we'll come up to our rectangle. Make sure it's on top of your entire replicator. Right click it and add image mask. No, actually, hold on. Okay, so from there, we're going to click and drag the rectangle, make sure it's out of the group. That was a mistake on my part. Okay, we're gonna right click and add image mask. We're gonna drag the bottom group into that. Now, you can see that our gradient has overtaken our audio elements and is added a little bit of um, energy to it. So now we can actually adjust these colors however we so desire. Um, and that means you could even animate it by adding some keyframes. And say we want it to go from red to, whoops, to green. We'll just pretend. So you can see that um, it just slowly animates, or if I reset that parameter, whoops, that's not actually what I wanted to do. I just want to get rid of these keyframes really quickly. Maybe I can just select those and delete them. Um, so we can actually assign these colors to work with our music. So if we select the red here, we will click on the color and add parameter behavior audio, and we can just select our song. And now the song will actually affect the brightness here um, of the waveforms. You can see how it's affecting that. You can come down to audio and we can actually set the apply mode to something like add and subtract. And uh, that does nothing. What if I do subtract? You can see how the modes are affecting it. Uh, we could set this to multiply. That might do something different. And you can go kind of crazy with this. We could also go to the color filter and we could even go select the cyan and add a parameter of random, of randomize. And we can drag the amounts up and just go a little crazy and let's just see what that does. So you can have a lot of fun with this, just playing around with the different parameters and stuff. Um, yeah, anyway, it's kind of a quick tutorial, but hopefully helpful. Play around with all the different parameters, set it how you like. I like to sometimes just mess around with how the line looks. If you could go to style and you can change the width if you wanted to. You can really just have tons of fun messing around and making it look exactly how you want to look. Um, sometimes I like to set this to something small, so it just looks like when the really big bursts of energy happen, it kind of spills over. So really the possibilities are endless. It's just up to you to, uh, to play around and let your creativity run wild. That about wraps it up. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you Opix for suggesting this tutorial. I really appreciate it and if you guys want to keep leaving those suggestions in the comments. I'm going to get to as many as I possibly can. I really have a lot of fun. Consider subscribing if you are interested in more tutorials just like this one. I come out with new videos every single week on filmmaking and I am looking forward to seeing you guys next week. My name is Dylan Bates with The Final Cut Bro and I will see you next Wednesday.